I am not myself. I am that which watches the self. Like the itching sensation of walking out the door and knowing you've forgotten something, but you haven't. The disquieting sensation lingers no matter how many times you check your pockets. The all too real discomfort of a phantom emptiness. The sensation is the ghost of nothingness haunting you. I was born with that feeling and it never went away. That feeling, the thing that is missing, grows bigger with every day, but when nothing grows it becomes harder to find. So I must search for my missing thing and protect it, lest it be discovered by someone else. For people have been known to poke their dirty fingers in holes they find. I am not myself. I am that which watches the self, and I don't like what I see. A pink, fleshy exoskeleton, a shell that barricades my consciousness from my soul, a holding cell for the present moment, each and every one of them. This is a poem that came to me years ago one late night while struggling to fall asleep. I wrote the whole thing down in a single go which dumped the contents of my restless brain out and allowed me to sleep. The poem just sat on my computer for a long time, because I didn't know what to do with it until eventually I decided to turn it into a video game. Turning a poem into a video game is an unusual idea, but I arrived at the idea because of a confluence of elements. Mainly, the poem thematically fit together with another project of mine titled Industrial Dreams of Electronic Connections. Industrial Dreams is a music EP and video I created in 2020 that blends electronic and chiptune music in a unique way. The video for the EP featured pixel art in a Game Boy style, depicting a girl in a long shirt and underwear in various positions around her room. The moody nature of the video and music fit perfectly with the poem, and the two projects together created the seed for a new game idea in my mind. At the time I made the EP, I had never made a video game. I had dreams of making games, but no experience with coding, so as a musician, the first thing I did to experiment with game development was to make game music. I got deep into Famitracker and made an EP using the limitations of the NES. After that I developed the concept for Industrial Dreams, which incorporates chiptune sounds into the kind of electronic music I usually make. The next step towards becoming a game developer was to make game art, so I made pixel art for the video version of the EP. I didn't own a sprite editor, so I made the art in Clip Studio, which isn't ideal for pixel art. Without the knowledge of how to code or use a game engine, that is where the project ended. But now four years later I have the necessary skills to make the project a reality. My first major game, Hermit Home Designer, explored themes of social anxiety and depression, but did so in a dark comedy format that distanced the game from the weight of its themes. But with this game I wanted to return to those themes in a more serious way. The game is about a girl dropping out of college due to psychotic episodes and overwhelming anxiety, and returning to her hometown, told in the point and click and visual novel genres. It's a deeply personal story that I wasn't ready to tell when making her my home designer. With this project, I won't be hiding behind an anime veneer to make the story more palatable. Little of the gameplay has actually been established so far, because the driving feature of the game is its aesthetic, and I wanted to establish that before anything else. My first task was to recreate my favorite scene from the Industrial Dreams video. The main character is sitting on a bathroom counter, with her head down and occasionally looking into the mirror. I decided against using the existing assets and style, in favor of searching for a new look inspired by the original art. For the first go at this, I toyed with using an asset I found on itch.io called GB Camera for Unity. I heard about this because it was used in one of my favorite games, A Short Hike. I used a placeholder model I found on Sketchfab, and some unlit cubes to recreate the scene in Unity. The setup used a render texture to downsize the rendered image to pixel art. I wasn't satisfied with the result, mainly because of the lack of detail in the environment and the lack of a textural quality. I realized that I didn't want to use a 3D model for the main character, but still wanted a 3D aspect to the game. So I went back to the drawing board, and this time I decided to use Pure Ref to create a mood board to better understand the artistic vision of the game. I love this series of art images by Adams Carvalho, featuring girls in monochromatic palettes. I took my favorite of these that fit with my game and recreated it in a Game Boy pixel art style. I tried adding dithering for texture, but thought the results made the image look too busy so instead I added film grain. Pixel film grain isn't something I've seen done before, and I liked the result because it added the textural quality I thought was missing before. I didn't animate the concept art, but I did animate the film grain to see how it would look in motion. Inspired by the progress I had made, I took the art style in a completely new direction. I decided I didn't want my game to be in pixel art, but I still wanted the crispiness of pixels, so I upscaled the vision to be in a higher resolution, but to have no anti-aliasing. Now the project is in 720p, which is still lower than high resolution, and is small enough to maintain an MS Paint style crispiness. I was inspired by this image, and the two colored background that is similar to how I had been making art in a Game Boy palette, so I started from scratch making the bathroom scene. For the background, I used a photograph of my own bathroom that I ran through a threshold and gradient matte filter in Photoshop. Using photography for the backgrounds would sharply reduce the scope of the art for the game. I then drew the main character in the same pose as before, but now upscaled in Clip Studio using a brush with no anti-aliasing. I used Clip Studio's animation features to animate the head of the character, looking into the mirror and back to the ground. 
I also brought back the film grain, which still looks unique in the chunky style. Here I experimented with color palettes, and I'm still not settled on one. The main version is in purely pink and black, but I also made variations, including some with the character in color offset by the monochromatic background. Let me know in the comments which palette you prefer, because I'm open to feedback before finalizing things. I continued with this process to make a bathtub scene and a bedroom scene. For the bathroom I used another photograph, but for the bedroom I experimented with 3D renders. I had a bunch of room assets I had already made for other projects, so I put them together in a blender scene and rendered out an image. I then used the same Photoshop process I did with the photographs. I don't think I would be using this much for the actual game, because the development time would skyrocket if I had to make models for every environment, but I can use this method for backgrounds that can't easily be photographed by me. It was time to start turning the assets into a game, so I booted up a new Unity project and imported what I had so far. The game is primarily a visual novel, but I wanted there to be more features to the game than just reading text, so I ended up creating 3D models for interactable objects that can be viewed and spun around. This way, there is a point-and-click adventure aspect to the game. I used the models I had already made and created some new ones, and I textured them in a style that would fit with the monochromatic palette of the game. To do this, I created a texture that was simply two colors on a square canvas, and sized all the UVs to fit in the respective color regions. I'm considering adding new colors for the interactable objects, so they stand out from the environment, but I don't want them to clash with the existing art style. The game now has a cassette, a guitar pedal, a phone, a watercolor set, and a spinning fan. I used a sprite to create cursors that gave the game a retro feel. For music, I am temporarily using the tracks from Industrial Dreams of Electronic Connections. I may end up using those tracks in the final game, but either way, I'm going to need more music in the style, and I need to remix the old tracks. Back when I originally made the music, I was less skilled in music production than I am today. The only headphones I owned were Sony MDR-7506s, which have a very flat EQ with little bass. This is good for mixing if you know what you're doing, but at the time, I thought I had to crank up the bass without realizing I was just compensating for the headphones I was using. Because of this, the tracks are muddy and have way too much low end. I didn't even use tricks like a high pass filter on the low end instruments to clean up the unnecessary frequencies. Nowadays, I have more headphones and a subwoofer, so mixing is a much easier experience. I also used to mix my tracks very dry, which is in contrast to how now I like to drench my tracks in delay and reverb. Industrial Dreams uses only a few instruments throughout the EP. For the chiptune sounds, I used a free plugin called Digital Math's Chip Machine. For the bass synth, I used the free plugin Tal Bassline, and for the drums, I made extensive use of Trobemine C, which is modeled after the Roland CR78. There are multiple bass instruments in every song. All of the songs are in odd time signatures, which adds a slightly off-settled feel to the tracks. The first song, The View From Inside, is in 7-8 and utilizes a 1-8 delay that makes the song feel like it's almost in common time, but not quite. The second song, Industrial Dreams, is in 5-4 for the choruses and 13-8 for the verses. This makes the song feel run down and spacious in the lo-fi verses, and big and rhythmic in the choruses. The third song, Minefield, is in 13-8, and features snare rolls and alternating rhythms. The last song, Electronic Connections, has a bunch of time signatures. Every vertical line in Reaper is a time signature shift. of the progress on the game so far. Let me know what you think I should work on next and any features you think should be added. I'm looking for ways to make the game more of a point and click adventure and less of a visual novel, and I also want to add escape room elements to the game. To follow the progress on this game and my other projects, subscribe and follow my ex for Screenshot Saturday posts. This has been Ryan9, thank you for watching.